Welcome back to Blackwood Blade Play. Blackwood here with another pocket tool review for you. Today we have the Ontario Knife Company Carter Prime. It's a beautiful, beautiful box. They send it in now. It's just a regular box, but tell you what, you need something, you call them up. Customer service is prime. Now what you have here is a 3.37 inch blade as labeled. I just call it 3.4 inches. Titanium scales, titanium backspacer, titanium pocket clip, IKBS ball bearing system. It's a smooth knife. It's just so smooth. And it's good for a variety of tasks. Now it's designed by Robert Carter. His original knife was a custom and man, you Good luck finding one of those. This is the only way you're going to get your hands on one of these designs. Tell you what. The Generalist. That's what he called his. This is the Carter Prime. Robert Carter, Carter Prime, the Generalist. He called his knife the Generalist, the one this one was modeled after. The Generalist because it would suit all general needs. What that means is boxes, paper, wood, you name it. This thing will do it. It'll, it'll do just about everything. And... It's not going to necessarily exceed at any task. For instance, there are certain knives that are available out there where, you know, they're meant for a certain task. A lot of the tactical blades, the stilettos, you know, something like the karambit here. Man, I really don't, I really don't understand why you'd carry something like this. Everyday carry other than self-defense reasons, you know what I mean? Like, you can open some boxes with it. God knows I did. Put a wave feature on there. That's cool. This is the Tarani 511 Cub Karambit S30V blade. And the little wave feature is nice. I love modding my knives, other than the fact that when you mod your knives, sometimes, let's see if we can get this to focus, you can crack your scales if they're cheap. Anyway, there's a small hairline crack right there. And, yeah, just because the force of the back lock opening, woo, a little shaky out here, you know, just just absolutely just, it's just like too much force on that snap to scale. It wasn't meant for it, wasn't designed for it. So if you're thinking about doing something like this, something like this, maybe something to keep in mind. Back to the Carter Prime. The generalist copy. You know, generalist, specialist, you know, you got the specialist and the generalist. Yeah, just like the species. This one can survive everywhere, do everything, and you know, this one, it does really well in its own little niche. Gotta love them. The reason why you'd buy this knife is because you want a tool that's going to do everything. I've heard some negative reviews about, oh, ergonomics. My, one of my favorite YouTubers, Nick Shabazz, he's, you know, his hands are too big. That's what the problem is. It's not, you can't hate on the knife and what it's built out of and what it does and how it flips. You can't hate on it. He's just, it's not comfortable for him. It hits, sits in his hand right here. You know, for me to do that, I can, my finger barely, it's, that's not comfortable for me. This thing rests right on my palm. I get my fingers on the clip and, oh man, I, we, got, we got some sirens going by messing up my video. Internal stop pin. You got stainless steel insert. You can do anything with this knife. Hard use, soft use. Personally, this is my letter opener. I live in Rhode Island and it's a little bit too long. Blade laws and whatnot. Although it's not stabby at all. I suppose this would be carryable in Rhode Island if you had a specific task for this and it was only a tool and no one could argue that this was a was going to be a weapon of some sort. Did some custom anodization here. Didn't come with this. If you see the pictures of them online, they're all this color all the way around. This is uh, done with a blowtorch. So if you're interested in doing any heat anodization, this is definitely the way to go. It's cheap. You got a blowtorch. You want to play around. You can take this knife apart. All the screws are high quality. You're not going to mess anything up just taking it apart, you know. Although, when you do take it apart, you're going to want to put it in a bucket, like a little bin. Put a towel down. When you start taking it apart, all the ball bearings, 
you got to separate them, clean them all, and you don't want to lose them. They start falling, bouncing on the ground everywhere. You're going to be in trouble. You're, it's just a nightmare situation with the IKBS ball bearing system. And that's really the only thing that I can really hate on the knife about is when you go to take it apart and clean it and you want to do stuff to it, it's, you can't be lazy. You know, you have to know what you're getting into with the IKBS ball bearing system. And I learned a lot from watching Nick Shabazz's video which I'll uh, link in the description on how to take this thing apart and clean it up and everything and what he recommends. I highly, highly agree with everything he says in that video in particular. So, the Carter Prime at 5.1 ounces. Would I recommend this for people? You, well, absolutely. If you have large hands, no. Extra large hands, no. Medium hands like myself, absolutely. This is a joy. Oh, I could hard use this thing with no gloves and I'd be fine. They hate on how aggressive the jimping is. My thumb rests here if I want to do some hard use stuff and I want to get that high up on it to somehow get a better grip that I don't really think is necessary. I could wear some gloves and, man, that traction would be my best friend with some gloves, wouldn't you think? That would, that would operate well with a nice pair of grippy gloves, something tactical maybe, I don't know. Whatever you're doing out there, if you're in the woods, oil your blades. That's it. Oil your blades up. D2. Wonderful. How can you go wrong? This is one of those knives where you can use it every day. And then, ah, uh, it's getting a little bit dull. Oh, what's that? I'm just gonna, just gonna grab this strop here and, wow, amazing. Strop it a couple times and you're good to go. Uh, this knife's done some woodwork just recently, a little test, and we'll see how she holds up. I have a piece of magazine paper here. I don't like to use computer paper or those sorts of things, although they're convenient. I just get a lot of this mail that gets sent to my house, so I, uh, I don't have to destroy good paper for no reason. And just take care of the things that they send me, you know. Just be, It's just an ad. So, if I can, you know, you can fast forward through the ads. I like to cut them out. Exactly what I'm going to do. Literally, just cut the ads right out. You know, you can, some, it's so windy out here, it's a little bit hard, but if you, if you notice, I can pull it right through and, whoa, hitting the camera there. Sorry, guys, sorry. It's too windy out here for this stuff, man. Whew. So I'm just saying, she holds a great edge, D2 steel. You just got to keep her oil. Don't stick her in a puddle and stick her in your pocket. You know, don't leave it in the car and... If you live in Rhode Island, it's kind of a humid environment, hot, cold. You build up some moisture in your car or something sometimes. And next thing you know, you'll have spot on all over your blade edge. And uh, speaking of blade edges, it's a 14 and a half degree angle on this one. If you're wondering, it does not come to you like this. This was done with the Wicked Edge system. Uh, I went from, you know, 100 grit to 1,000 grit. And uh, didn't take that much time, but, you know... I've had harder steels to sharpen than D2, if you're looking to get a sharpening. It's a hard steel. Don't get me wrong. The hardness is definitely up there, because if it wasn't, it would not keep its edge so good. The heat treat on this blade must be quite all right. And uh, that's one of my biggest gripes with certain steels. You, you say, oh, you know, I M390. Oh, it sounds great. Yeah, look at the reviews. Look at the composition. This is what the people say. And then... You get your M390 and, well, if, like, for instance, uh, Lion Steel. Uh, my father has the Maletta. He bought that, oh, M390, great steel. I'm going to buy it, better edge retention, works well, uses it at work. No, not at all. And you think that you just get a S35VN, you're going to get a quality knife steel because it's made for knives. And depending on your application and, where you're going to be using the knife, you know, ah, soft steel, great, yeah, easy to sharpen. Yeah, if you're out in the woods and you're using a rock, great. You can put a somewhat of an edge on your knife that you're not going to be able to do to S3V or uh, D2 or anything of that nature at all. So it, it has its place, and I, I can see that, but not on an expensive, expensive knife. If you're producing a knife over $200 and you can't keep your edge even close to something for $70, this is Amazon. $71.13 today or something like that. How, how can you argue? You want a nice titanium knife. You have medium hands. You have small hands. Your wife has small hands or medium hands, and she's kind of interested in knives, but 
you know, you don't want to drop a bunch of money, give her something that you're not really going to, you know. Hell, buy it for her. It might end up being yours. You never know. Guys, even with slightly bigger hands, it's, it's not that bad. You can open it different ways. You can, you can choose to open it different ways. If you have real big hands, this is, this is going to be a problem. You know what I mean? But what do you say? Do you want one or not? Thanks for tuning in to Blackwood Blade Play, and have a wonderful day. Be safe. Don't do anything silly. Enjoy your tools. Take care of them. Modify them when you want to. Make them your own. Sometimes buying a knife is kind of about making it special for me, personally. So, if you guys have any interesting mods that you've done, any little customizations, any small touches that you feel really made a knife yours, feel free to leave them in the comments. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day, everybody.